So we only have a couple more minutes to go, and I just wanted to ask you something um, that you have on your book. Why is Satan so intent on destroying America? I know that we need more than two minutes, but... Yeah, uh, in 30 seconds, Mm -hmm. we are a firewall against global tyranny. Amen. And our military is a firewall against uh, tyranny. And the United States represents the only reason that Red China does not exercise its full authority to destroy the nations. Right. It's the only reason it doesn't step down and squash Australia, just south of them. And we have to understand why Satan wants America out of the way is because his one world system. And I want to finish with something Jeremiah, the Lord said to Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. Go and tell the people that they've said that Babylon will take them into bondage. And at the end of it, he said, perhaps they will listen and I will be able to delay the judgment on them. I look at the book of Revelations. I know that things are coming, but I also know that revival will stay the hand of God's judgment. And that's why we need in this hour to pray for America and to stand up for America like right. never before. Right. Agreed. So we are the ecclesia and we're a legislated yeah. force that in our prayers and when we recognize who we are and recognize truly the authority that we have, that will bring a shift. But again, going back to the church, the shaking starts in the house of the Lord and in, in, in getting, getting rid of sin, getting rid of, you know, there's racism in the church, right? That has yes. to shift. There's sin in the church. There's sexual in, in, you know, uh, impurity in the church. All this has to stop. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really an encounter again. The Lord's wooing us. And, you know, I've shared this before. And in 1 Kings 18, before Elijah called down the, pro- uh, the fire, you know, when he was challenging the prophets of Baal, he restored the altar. And he said, come, let's, let's repair this altar. That, so that altar of intimacy, the altar of us, all of us getting on our faces before the Lord, right. crying out, right. repenting for our, right. our attitude, our judgments, our, you know, our thought process is contrary yes. to the word. God is saying, get on your face before me. Develop that intimate altar, that time with me, so that, you know, that you're hearing clearly. And you're not, you're not hearing a whisper, a voice of the enemy. Whose voice is louder right now? Is it your flesh? Is it the enemy speaking to you? Or is it the spirit of the Lord that, that where you can just go back to the word of God and say, here is what the word of God is saying? Not because someone else is saying it, but here the Holy Spirit convicted me and showed me this truth. And so that's my heart's cry for where we're at as a country is because God loves America. And you, you have a statement in your book that the zeal of the Lord is what is going to save America. Well, the zeal of the Lord needs to consume each and every one of us. Right. And hey, that's what makes that shift. So anyway. And when you study the, the root system of the economics of America, it was really driven by Adam Smith in large part who was very clear on the only way democracy and capitalism will work together is if people of high ethics are are in control. And, and, you know, that might have sounded a little idealistic to them in the beginning, but we know God bless this country. I mean, we're in a part of the world where it's called the crossroads of the Revolutionary War here. And it it was impossible on paper that, that, uh, that America would ever be able to defeat Britain. Impossible. In fact, where we're sitting was a troop uh, yeah. location for the French army that was here helping the Americans to fight against Britain. So, you know, if you don't realize the hand of God was on the creation of this country oh, yeah. from the beginning, you're missing a really important thing. And even right on the Liberty Bell, there's a there's a verse inscribed from Leviticus right on there. So it was built right into our culture. And to think we could have all the benefits of the freedom without, you know, like I quoted earlier from Psalm 2, why do the nations rage and plot a vain thing? Well, the vain thing is to think you can have all the benefits without the cost of living yes. a life of discipleship to the Lord. Yes. And, you know, uh, another guy, that uh, Bonhoeffer, said there's a cost of discipleship. You know, when, when God right. calls a man, he calls him to die. And I never forgot somebody said, if you think the cost of discipleship is high, you should try the cost of non-discipleship. <laughs> live in sin for a while and you know the devil is a much meaner boss we can tell you that firsthand we were there and you know yes you do have to sacrifice some 
the pleasures of sin for a season to follow the Lord. But man, it's a way better outcome than, than all the counterfeits that, that the world offers to replace him. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Absolutely right She's on. She's in a rush. You know, like, I need I'm worship. I'm in a rush. We only have an hour. No, no, we don't only have an hour. We run the network here, right? So I'm, I'm yeah. calling an overtime period. Like, <laughs> it's like when you're well, leading worship and you have to look at the pastor and say, can I do one more? And, you know, I do one more. I talk to well, the pastor. You're, he lets you're, me uh, your church is located in the perfect setting for an outpouring of the Holy I Spirit. I agree. 100%. Because it's, it's, it's in the soil. It's in the ground. It really it's is. Yeah. Whitfield well, preached in this town, and it, it's in his journals yeah. that people were falling out under the power of God in the 1740s when he preached here. And, you know, the wells of revival. Do it again, Lord. Amen. Yeah, do it again. Amen. It's right. And, you Amen. know, he will. He just needs well, some people who can't do it in their own strength but are crazy enough to think that he'll do it in his strength through us. Yes. You know, Moody, uh, they had a bunch of people come out to Moody. A lot of people don't realize he was a spirit-filled guy, and there were, there were healings going on in Chicago when he was running the, 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 the Bible studies during the day. And, and a guy came out to study, you know, the phenomenon of what was happening because it was well-known. And the guy concluded after a week, the guy that was reporting, he said, uh, <laughs> he said, Mr. Moody, it's very evident to me that none of this is happening because of your natural gifting, because you don't have any. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Moody said, sir, there's no greater compliment that you could give me than to know that it has to be the Lord. Because as soon as we think we're doing it, game over. It, it is. And that, you know, in, when you said that the Revolutionary War in Washington, crossing the Delaware, when he did, and uh, coming into Jersey, the way he did, it was a miracle. You were real, the whole Pure and thing. simple. Miracle. And, and we need to look at it this way because, you know, when Thomas Paine wrote his pamphlet that, uh, you know, Washington printed it all, made every soldier read one. And, and he talked about these are the times that try men's soul. But everyone watching needs to understand God isn't looking at everybody to recruit them. He's looking at you. And, and even in New York City, when Washington lived in New York City, he was trying to be a general. He could have been assassinated at any time because of all the New Yorkers that were still loyal to England. The church can feel that way right now. We can feel betrayed by many of our own. Right. Many who are going to vote for abortion, many who uh, are in the church and say, I have no problem with same sex marriage. I, and, and you look at it and your heart can sink. And you can realize, man, I can't believe how many pastors aren't preaching the Bible. I can't believe how many Christians are being quiet when they should speak up. Well, that was true during the Revolutionary War. Right. There was a core of people that believed in what they're doing and believing that they needed to keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's why I never quit. I never give up. I keep right. speaking out. And every day I'm shocked how many more are rallying to our side. Right. How many more are starting to say, Mario, I believe what you're saying. Amen. And God's about to drop the plan on us. Right. Well, when Amen. sin abounds, <laughs> grace abounds Amen. more. You know, the darker it gets, the brighter the, the Christians are going to shine. I, I quoted this often, too, over the years because it stuck with me so much. It, like I, I was saying, one of the messages you preached really stuck with me about Josiah. This is 20-plus years ago, but I never forgot it because he found his name in the Bible, and he found his identity. Even though he was a young guy, it was such a powerful message. And similarly, I was listening to another evangelist, and he was saying, we really don't want to be standing in front of the Lord someday and him say, I put you in the earth at, at a time when they really needed to hear what you had to say. And you can't come to him and say, yeah, but I wasn't very good at it, Lord, so I just stopped trying. He said, you've got to be able to say, I wasn't very good at it, but I never stopped trying. And, and I feel like that's what we're in right now. It's one of those windows of opportunity that even if you don't feel great, uh, and, and even if it's like even joining some of the churches in your reason, because where we are, there's a lot of different diverse churches that are not necessarily multicultural. But why not 
be intentional about trying to pull them together and how can we know each other better? Because if we believe the answer's in the church and we all gather steam and one puts 1,000 and two put 10,000 to flight, then maybe we should look at ourselves first and say, how are we violating scripture by not being more intentional about being with each other? Yeah, that's exactly right. And no one, no one who isn't passionate in this hour about reopening the church when it's right is against racism. You only say you are. Because the church, I believe demonic activity spiked Absolutely. when the on-fire churches couldn't meet in their building. And I heard some guy that, you know, a 20 watt light bulb, he commented on my site that, well, the real church doesn't need to meet in a building. And he missed the point entirely. The right. Bible says, do not neglect right. the assembling of yourselves together. Right. And, and why was Paul so vehement about that? Because we have an effect on people when we are a physical group of oh, people big time. in a building, in a field. If we meet as a group, there's a corporate power that is released. Absolutely. And you can't get it any other way. Right. Come magnify the Lord with me. Right. Let us exalt yes. his name together. Right. There is yes. a power in that corporate anointing. How many times people have been healed just during worship? Yeah. Nobody yep. laying hands on them, just the anointing being so strong. Or demons cast out of them during worship. Yep. Yeah. You know, yep. uh, 20 years ago, coming into this region, um, in prayer, I saw the heavens open, and I saw the power of God just come and fall on people. And they, it, it was in the streets. It yes. was in the stores. And I believe that we are coming into that time. And also, where I go walking is where George Whitfield had open air revival. It's only like five blocks wow. from our home. And the one day I was walking, I was praying in spirit, and, and I saw what looked like pods, you know, pods, um, seed pods. And, and I saw them, you know, suspended in the air, and the Lord said, grab hold of it. It's, it's by faith. He said, because I never start something and that I don't bring to fruition to an end he said and the words that have been released my words are forever and he said and as it's activated in faith in the right heart he says you're going to see that explosion unlike anything you've Holy ever seen God. before 